place things down there in the lower caves. Hungry, blind things. Things that weren't right when they was born. They sniff you out, and then, well, there ain't much to eat down there. That's all I'm saying. When a scrawny ogre is born, the tribe does not suffer the weakling to live. Those born with gangly limbs or without an ogre's signature paunch are given over to a butcher who takes them to the deepest cave near the campsite. This cave mouth is invariably sealed with a boulder of tremendous size, but when this hefty blocking device is rolled aside, the mewling newborn is then tossed into the gaping pit, and the boulder heaved back into place once again. In ogre society, weakness is a death warrant, and by offering a sacrifice to the great moor, the tribe shows that it is still strong. Ever since the ogres migrated from the plains, stunted births have become common and many offerings are cast into the darkness. The caves of the Mountains of Morn are home to many monstrosities, and it would take extreme good luck for a full-grown ogre to survive for a week. Yet somehow, despite the dangers and the great odds against it, some of these undersized ogre whelplings live. Such is their hopeless determination to cling to life. The few forsaken that survive their first few days begin to scrape out an existence in the darkness, scrabbling for sustenance and feeding on base things that crawl in the dampness. Rats, fang leeches, crust worms, and many scraps of carcass thrown into the interconnecting tunnels by other ogres. Using stealth and savagery born of rock-bottom desperation and mutation, a small handful of aberrant infants eke out an unwholesome and troglodytic existence. The tunnels below the Mountains of Morn hold more secret than just unwanted ogre cast-offs. Unbeknown to any save a few clans of ratmen, the under-tunnels are laced with warpstone, the strange black or green glowing rock that contaminates all it touches. Those ogre spawn that live long enough learn to survive by snaking their emaciated frames into narrow crevices to avoid predators, naturally including other gorgers who think nothing of acts of cannibalism. These beasts are so hungry that they will gobble up anything they can scrounge, even the most tainted of things. This unnatural diet speeds their own mutations until the sinewy, Filth-encrusted creatures twist and grow into something horrible. What ogres know as a gorger. Accustomed to the pitch black of underground, gorgers use their flared nostrils to sniff out prey, which they will stalk relentlessly. Sometimes gorgers unwittingly happen upon an entrance to other caves, Perhaps scaven tunnels or the workings of a dwarf mine. The gorger will drag itself through the smallest of openings in order to run amok in such a food-rich environment. They will assail all they can find, and the wet snapping sounds of broken remnants being devoured will echo down the hallways. Some gorgers occasionally escape the underground labyrinths, scampering about when their pits are unblocked, or finding new exits that lead upwards or outwards. There in the dark they will stalk the valleys of the Mountains of Morn, sniffing out and devouring the unwary, returning to their caves before daybreak. 
When ogres go to war, the tyrants will unblock the tunnels and lure out gorgers with carcasses. Gorgers are either captured or dragged to battle in cages, or led in the right direction by a trail of blood-soaked flesh. Ogres will often blindfold captured gorgers before unleashing them, as a creature's beady eyes that are so unaccustomed to light, they howl when they are exposed to the sun. Gorgers are so used to hunting in the dark that this blindness does not hamper their fighting abilities, and they scent the blood of their foes on the wind. With a profusion of razor-sharp teeth and scything claws, a gorger attacks with savage ferocity that frequently lops off heads and limbs, splattering gore and viscera in wide arcs. Even more ravenous than an ogre, gorgers are degenerate eating machines, consisting of nothing but tough muscle, disease-ridden claws, and a malign, mindless instinct to kill and eat. To aid a gorger in its all-consuming diet to feed, it can distend or widen its jaws, in the same way serpents do, in order to swallow larger prey. If that weren't enough, their mouths are crammed full of teeth that grow rapidly to push through their slimy gums, replacing themselves daily, or sometimes even more quickly.